of the circus. For Jerry of the Circus. <laughs> so, it takes a Russian to appreciate what the Russovs can do. So, Boris, you get another fan letter, yes? Yes, but Olga, this is much more than just a fan letter. Here we have a fine Russian lady who understands the true greatness of the Cossacks. A Russian lady in this country? Like us, she is in exile. And so, when she sees the magnificent writing which we she do... She writes you a love letter, yes? No, that is not like that at all. This note is dignified, worthy of a great lady who writes to a great artist. Oh, so it is like that. Oh, this lady must be clever to write so fascinating a note. What does she say, Boris? Mm, I will read it to you. At the top, she says, my dream writer. It is as I said. The lady is romantic. Yes, perhaps. But she is also dignified. And wait, you listen. The Countess Rita Rimsikov. Not one of the wealthy families of Rimsikov. Don't interrupt, Olga. Of course, it must be the famous old family. We know they are all in exile. Yes, and we know, too, that they brought a fortune out of the old country. Go on, boy. This is the most important part. Tonight I am giving a grand costume ball at my estate. Estate? Aha, that sounds as if she is very wealthy. Olga? I am sorry, Boris. I will be quiet. If you will honor me by coming in costume, I will send my chauffeur with the town car for you. Huh? You see, she is rich. Be at the entrance at the circus grounds at 11.30. The motive of the costumes for the ball is childhood, so dress accordingly. That is quite simple. She is asking her guests to dress like children. It is quite the costume in this country, America. Probably the countess is trying to please her American friends. So, that must be it. She finishes like this. A young Russian countess in exile salutes you and eagerly awaits the opportunity to show her appreciation in person for your exquisite performance. That is all? Is that not enough? She sounds like a very discerning lady. You see, she appreciates the beauty of my writing. And probably the beauty of your profile. I cannot help it if all the lovely ladies are attracted with my appearance. It is a cross I must always bear. Ah, you do not fool me, Boris. You love it. And you work hard to keep yourself looking well. But it is good you do not show your age. You will still be handsome for many years. It is so. But now the question is, what shall I do about this charming countess? I suppose you mean by that, what will I do about fixing a costume for you by tonight? Good. I knew I could depend on you, Olga. I have not yet said I would do this. No, but you will, for my pleasure and for the good of the family. How do you mean the good of the family? You do not see. <laughs> and I thought you so wise for a woman. If this Russian lady is so wealthy with an estate... A town car, elaborate parties. Yes, but what has that to do with us? Olga, I am not yet married. Ah, of course. You mean if there is enough money, it might be worth... Yes, of course, the Russos need more money, and always more money. All right, Boris. I will fix you so great a costume that you will put to shame all the Americans who attend this party. Good. You will not be sorry, Olga. As head of our family, I will see that you will be rewarded. It is true that you and I seem to realize more than the others the importance of having our own service. We must take advantage of anything that looks like an opportunity to further the interests of the Russo family. Now, about this party tonight, what shall I wear? You must be very grand. Perhaps I should make you some velvet knickerbockers like the great people wore at court. Yes, that is good. I will look well in short velvet knickers. 
put perhaps those silver buckles of yours at the knees. I will gladly lend them to you for so good a cause. And a silk shirt with a gay colored sash at the waist. Ah, oh, you will make a very fine Romeo. Then I will ask that youngster, Jerry, to lend me his plumed hat which he wears in the ring with El Mundo. Boris, you are a genius. Indeed, you will make such a fine Romeo, the great lady will fall head over heels in love with you. Of that, I am sure. I must see Claire at once at the wardrobe. I may need some assistance. Of course, for you only have a few hours in which to make this costume. Don't forget to ask Jerry for that hat of his. It will be very dashing with the costume. Yes, and it will give me a chance to make a very costly bow before the lady when we meet. I am afraid, Olga, we will have this wealthy countess eating out of our hands before the night is out. <laughs> Oh, there you are, Jerry. I was wondering what had happened to you. Are you sure Boris got the letter? Shh, shh, shh. That's allowed. Oh, I'm sorry. We must be sure no one knows of this but ourselves. If Boris talks, sir, that is fine. He's talking all right. You should have heard him boasting at dinner about this fine lady who has invited him to her mansion and how rich he is. And mm. <laughs> was uh, Mr. Randall there? I'll say. And Pumps and everybody. Boris has been making a big fuss over the whole thing. And everybody seemed to fall for it, too. Yeah, I bet he won't come to meals for a week when he finds it's a gag. I'd feel sorry for him if he hadn't been so mean to Whitey. Ah, uh, don't you worry about him. He needs to be taken down. He's one of the vainest men I've ever met in this business. Uh-oh, speaking of angels, here comes our hero right now. Where? Oh, oh yeah, he's heading for us. You don't think he's guessed already? Shh, of course not. Well, uh, uh, hello there, Boris. You look particularly well tonight. Yes, I feel unusually fit. And it is well as I am having a very important engagement this oh, evening. Is that so? You're going to do another act, huh? Well, in a way, you are right. In a way, you are wrong. That sounds pretty mysterious, Oh, Boris. but I will no longer be mysterious. I have been invited this very evening by a very famous lady. And a very rich and exceedingly beautiful lady to be a guest of honor at the Grand Costume Ball. Jiminy. Hey, that sounds like a lot of fun. It is a great responsibility, for she is a great Russian lady who has heard of the greatness of the Russo family. Really? My, my, my. That's certainly unusual. But? I mean, of course, she would have heard of you. Well, that is better. And now, Jerry, I have a little favor to ask of you. Sure. What can I do for you? I wonder, would you be kind to lend me the gay hat you wear in the act with El Mundo? Sure, of course. I'd be glad to lend it to you. You think Mr. Randall had mine? After all, it belongs to the circus. I already, already tell him about tonight. Uh, he told me to go ahead. Clara is helping Olga with my costume. My, my, you will be grand, won't you? I will probably steal the show. But that is as it should be. I finished my act. Do you want it now? No, no, I, I must go now. But if you will bring it to my tent after my act, I will be glad. Okay. Hope you have a nice time. Mm, don't worry. There, I must go now. Well, he sure fell for a took line and sinker, didn't he? <laughs> I feel kind of mean. <laughs> well, don't. If he can't take a joke, it's his own fault. I know if someone played such a crazy joke on me, I'd laugh with him when I found it out. But I'm afraid Boris won't take it like that. My, oh, my, look at that man. Boris rides that Arabian horse of his as if he were part of it. <laughs> He's sure playing to the grandstand tonight. What a shame. The beautiful countess is only a myth. Boy, Boris is out doing himself tonight, all right. Yes. <laughs> the way he takes those bows, you'd think he was a whole show. Yeah, he thinks he is, but his brothers are just as good. Well, I guess I'd better make a change. Oh, I've still a turn to do. Don't forget to take Boris your hat. Oh, I won't. It ought to add to the picture as he stands on the curbstone and waits. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you out in front before 11.30. We don't want to miss any of the fun. Yeah, from the way he's acting, he'll be on time, so come early. <laughs> oh, I will. So long, Slat. Bye. <laughs> Glad to meet you, Mr. Randall. It's a mighty fine show you got. Yes, sir. Yes, well, if you've enjoyed it, we're all satisfied. Indeed, I have, Mr. Randall. I tell you, every time your circus comes to town, I get out the old car and bring the whole doll darn family. (laughs) Yes, sir. We wouldn't know the summertime if we didn't see your show. Well, that's nice. Yes, sir. I was telling Liza only this morning. Liza, I said... 
I guess it's about time we canned them beans. Yeah. It's midsummer, and last year we canned them beans a week after the circus comes to town. Oh, yeah, well, the circus is uh, almost a calendar for you, isn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes, <laughs> that's right, Mr. Uh-huh. Randall. Well, I tell you, uh-huh. if your circus had skipped our town this year, Liza and me'd probably clean forgot about them <laughs> beans. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, please. I, I must see that boy about something. Oh, sure, sure thing. Uh-huh. Business before pleasure, I always yeah. say. Uh-huh. Uh, Jerry. Uh, Jerry. Oh, it's you, Mr. Yes, I wanted to see you about... Uh, excuse us. Uh, I'll see you next summer. Yeah, that's right. Uh, bean calendar. Yeah. <laughs> did you want something, Mr. Yeah, Randall? Not so loud, Jerry. Uh, certainly did. I wanted to get away from that man back there. He was talking an arm off me. Yeah. Some folks sure can get all wound up. Yeah. Well, where are you heading, Jerry? Well, I... Oh, well, no. If it's a secret, I, I don't want to butt in. Oh, no, of course it's not. I was supposed to meet Slats out here. Oh, I see. Well, it's still pretty crowded out here in the Midway. Some of these towners like to hang around to the last minute. Ah, and the nights the tents come down, sometimes we have to call in the police to clear the way. Oh, I don't blame them for liking to watch those big tops come down. Yeah. Say, that's all the excitement. Where? Over there in the corner. Oh. Look, look at that crowd. Something must have happened. Oh, I don't think so. The crowd just seems to be laughing. Hey, oh, why, it's Boris, Mr. Randall. Boris? Well, what on earth is he doing out here in that get-up? <laughs> he does look kind of funny in it, doesn't oh. he? Oh, yes, I remember. Now he told me something about uh, being invited to a, a, a costume ball. He, he was pretty excited about the whole thing. Yeah, I loaned him my hat. Recognize it? Yeah, well, say, I'm not very keen on his making a spectacle of himself out here. I guess I'd better talk to him. Oh, there you are, Jerry. I thought you'd never get here. What's happened? Say, Slats, Mr. Randall's kind of upset because Boris is causing such a commotion out here in front of the circus. Yeah, I say he is. You should have heard a couple of the boys guiding him back there. Uh, has he been waiting long? Got a while. He's uh, hot under the collar about all the kids he's getting. Hey, look, Boris is all excited talking to Mr. Randall. Hey, look at the crowd gathering around. Oh, there's a policeman. See it. You don't think there's going to be any trouble? Not with Mr. Randall there, but it's lucky he came. Boris was likely to say something mean to that crowd. <laughs> I sort of wish we hadn't gotten into all this. Don't worry. He's waited long enough already. Anyhow, the crowd is kind of losing interest now. Yeah. It was only good for a laugh when they could get Boris's goat. Uh-huh. Here comes Mr. Randall now. Evening, Mr. Randall. Oh, oh. hello, Slats. Well... Certainly have got to see that a thing like this doesn't happen again. How do you mean? Uh, one of the performers coming out here in costume. Uh, with the audience not yet gone. Why, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, good night, folks. I've got some things to do. Night. Night? Gee, Slats, I sure hope we don't get into trouble on account of this. Uh-huh. <laughs> 